welcome. In this lesson, we're going to go through the Fly Me to the Moon guitar chords, specifically with walking bass lines. So this is a jazz guitar walking bass plus chords arrangement tutorial of Fly Me to the Moon. This is the third lesson in a little series that I'm doing about how to play jazz guitar walking bass lines and chords at the same time. There's a link in the description if you want to go to a playlist where all the videos are in one place for this whole series. In the first two lessons, we just went over some of the basics for how to get started with this stuff, how to do it with certain types of progressions, and how to do it with vamping on a, on a single chord. So if you're interested in the topic in general, check those out, but you don't have to have seen those to benefit from this lesson because we're just specifically going through exactly an arrangement of how to play walking bass lines with chords for Fly Me to the Moon. I'm going to walk you through note for note exactly what I'm doing with the bass line, exactly what chord shapes to use, when and where and how. And so if you just want that arrangement, you're in the right place. First, we're going to go through exactly the notes that I want you to use just for the walking bass line over the whole tune of Fly Me to the Moon. Then we're going to add a root position chord shape to throw in every time a chord changes. Every time you're playing the root with the bass line and there's a new chord, we're going to play a chord shape on top of playing the bass line. Then we're going to add a second chord shape that we can add on beat three of every measure when the bass line isn't necessarily on the root. So we'll talk about why and how and what exact shapes to use. And then we'll have the whole walking bass line plus a chord shape to play on beat one and a chord shape to play on beat three of every measure throughout the arrangement. And lastly, I will then demonstrate the whole arrangement while singing the melody and the lyrics, just so you can hear how this all comes together in the context of the actual song. If you want to skip straight to that example to see how it sounds, you can go to the timestamp that is listed on the screen here, or just go down to the description and click on the link with the timestamp is listed in the outline of the lesson. <laughs> Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory and mapping out the fretboard and creating guitar arrangements and some jazz guitar, some solo guitar, some practice strategies, all designed to help us get more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome, and please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss new lessons. Okay, first let's just go over the exact bass line that I want you to play. What I have here is the chords on the screen, just a lead sheet of the chords that I just created from the iReal Pro app. And I wrote the numbers underneath each measure there, the scale degree numbers, or you can think of them as chord tone numbers, um, based off of the root of each chord. Those are the notes I want you to play for the bass line. So this is just an arrangement. There's going to be many options one could play for a bass line, just in the same way that if someone played a solo, there's many, many ways you can create different melodies over a certain chord from a certain scale. Um, but this is just a really straightforward way that I want you to think of it. And I'm doing this very much on purpose for you because if I just gave you tab of this, if I just told you here's exactly what notes to play, uh, what frets to play, and you just kind of learn it physically on the fretboard, you're going to miss the whole massive benefit, um, a huge point that I want to get across with this lesson. One is, yes, it'd be cool to just be able to play it. So that's one thing. But I very much want you to think of be able to um, and have to have to work your way through this theory information. So does it take a little longer to learn? Maybe if you don't know that stuff, but it is so worth it, I promise you. So one, two, flat, three, five, we want to say, okay, from A minor, from the root of A, where's one, where's two, where's flat three, where's five. I'm not telling you what frets to play them because you can really play them anywhere as long as you're playing that correct scale degree or that correct uh, chord tone. The lines are just what direction you go. The line above two, above three, above five, or below. It's do you go up or down from where you were before? So we start on one, which is just A, and then you're going to go up to two, up to flat three, up to five from there. And then if we kept going to D minor there, you're going to go down. The line is below. You go down to one. You're going to go down to flat seven of D, down to six of D, down to five of D. So if you don't know your theory in that way, this is a huge kind of um, indicator of how valuable that can be and how, and really just want to tell you, it's so worth working on that, right? I re highly, highly recommend taking however long it takes to start to understand that stuff. That's when you're going to really have that freedom over music 
in the way that we want to, rather than just like, I don't know, I learned this arrangement and it sounds good, but I'm not really sure what's going on within, within the music. So then we go to G and the root, and then we go to two, three, five. Okay, now we're on C major seven. One goes down to one, goes up to two, goes up to three, goes up to five. Now again, it doesn't matter where you play this, but I want you to, I want you to only play on the sixth and fifth string for now. Um, and really for this whole arrangement, just play bass lines on the sixth and fifth string. And then when we add chord shapes in later, that'll force you to play, to land on certain places to play the chord shapes. When you're just doing the bass line, do them anywhere. And if you have to change that later for the arrangement with the chord shapes, totally fine. Okay. So we just did C major. We're on the five. We're going down to one of F, seven of F, six of F, five of F, etc. So I have one of B half diminished, flat three, flat five, back to flat three, one of E, flat seven, five, down to three, one. You can hear it really connecting, right? One, two, one, three, one, flat seven, six, five, one, two, three, five, one, three, one, two. This spot is really cool. One of C, three of C, one of F, flat seven of F, one of E minor, uh, e minor seven, flat five of E minor seven, even though e flat five isn't in the chord, that's okay, we're using it as an approach tone, do do to A seven, and then three of A seven. So, and then just to make it a little cleaner and easier to look at, I put just put those little quotation marks to say, play what was previously you know already done. So the D minor seven to G, you can just look above and say, oh, one flat seven, six, five, one, two, three, five. It's just saying, play what was um, done already. One, seven, one, uh, flat seven. Dun, dun, dun. Now I'm just kind of, um, I'm just gonna demonstrate through it now. Uh, and I do want to say, no, every, everything's pretty clear here. Um, I guess I was gonna say the D minor and the D minor seven and the G seven at the very bottom, the very bottom line, the first two measures of that bottom line, that G, D minor seven, G seven, the quotes there, I should probably write in the notes, those should mimic the D minor seven and G seven on the third line. Otherwise, everything is totally straightforward. You can just think of it um, the way I talked about it. You know, when you go back to the B section and it's showing the quotes, it's just saying, we already played this stuff. Those eight measures are the same as the first eight measures. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Just didn't want it to be too crowded with all those numbers. You can just start to get familiar with playing the same thing again. So if I just kind of demonstrate through. One, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, one, two, Okay, so I already played that stuff. Um, I, I don't need to demonstrate the whole thing through. You get the idea. You totally get how this works now. So let's go on to the second phase. And just to reiterate one more time, if to get to that point to play them through, you have to go through a whole process of figuring out, whoa, how do I even find those numbers, then that's good. That's the place that I want you to be. That's what's going to rocket you forward in your knowledge and your skill level and kind of a gap that we, we want to fill in to be able to do this stuff. If you don't know where to start to learn that stuff, check out my music theory series. It's like a chord and harmony theories on the guitar. Super thorough and deep, 26 lessons long. I put a ton of work into it. Totally just a free YouTube playlist. I'll put a link to that that playlist in the description. So if you need to study your theory and figure out how, how do I find those numbers on chords, everything will be there for you in that series. Okay, phase two, I have another version here where now we added chord shapes in and you see the little blue highlight on beat one of every measure. That just means where that beat is, that's when we're playing the chord shape that is listed. So I'm giving you the exact chord shape and it shows you know what fret position to be on for that chord shape. So that chord shape is what we need for each chord change. So every time a chord changes on the beat that it changes, uh, we're gonna play that chord shape and the bass line remains the same as it was before. So again, you might have to change where you play the bass line because you need that note to be lined up with the spot that the chord shape is, is um, listed on the fretboard. So you'll be fine figuring that out, I'm sure. Just let me know if you have questions in the comments. Uh, but let me address that we wanna add the chords. Um, in the end, we wanna add them in a few ways. You can play the chord right on the beat. That kind of thing. You can add the chord as the upbeat. This is stuff I went over in the, this is stuff I went over in the first two um, lessons in this series, but you don't have to watch those to kind of get this down. 
Mm. So I'm doing kind of an up punch of the chord on the upbeat right after the chord changes. And the other one is combining those two. I call that a double punch. And then just, I just do a combination of those at however I feel it, however, however I want to. Um, just the, that's the variety that we're going through. So um, I'm gonna just kind of play through this slowly. We have that shape and then two, three, five. D minor shape, flat seven, six, five, one. Shape, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, one. Shape, seven, six, uh, five. Shape, flat three, flat five, flat three. One, it's hard to say it while I'm doing it. Two. Okay, so that's the idea. Pretty cool, right? It's pre pretty full sounding, um, but we still are going to do a third phase here. That's what I want you to kind of understand. You can jump straight to the third phase once you understand this stuff, but I'm building it up one by one to say, just let's make sure we understand what the bass line is. Let's understand how to add the chords that just have the root position, the root position chords, and then we're going to add another voicing of a chord on beat three on those measures where um, there's not a chord change every two beats. Um, and that's where it really gets kind of bigger and more advanced sounding. So here it is, here's that arrangement. Now you see the highlighted blue um, notes on the exact chord tones that we wanna play those chords. So it's just every beat one and every beat three, right? So you see one, flat three um, on the first measure there where the chords happen, and the one and the six on the second measure there where the chords happen, and then the shapes themselves, just the exact shapes that I want you to play. Let me describe, let me explain these shapes real quick. Um, you have that first shape and then you have two and you have flat three and then you have this chord shape off of flat three. So that's how you want to, that's how you want to think of it. Like, okay, I'm I know that I'm playing flat three and then, okay, that chord shape there. And it shows also that it's seventh fret position lined up with the seventh fret there. Um, like that's the shape I, I want to play. Uh, if you want to know the theory of that, um, check out the video, the previous video in this series, but you don't have to know that to just get this down. But I will just explain that it's either an inversion, like this is the flat three on the bottom of a voicing of A minor. So it's a first inversion A minor triad that this particular shape is, the second shape on the sheet. Um, so it's either gonna be that or it's gonna be something where it looks like a chord shape. Let's go ahead and go to that D minor, flat seven, six. It looks like a chord shape that if you know some of your seventh chord voicings, this fourth chord on the sheet here where it says second fret off of the six of D minor, that looks like a root position half diminished chord because that shape is a root position half diminished chord. But I'm using it because the six is the note in the bass line. And then above that, those three notes are just a D minor triad. So really, if we wanted to label it kind of theoretically and be super specific, this is a an inversion of D minor six. It has a minor triad and then a six on the bottom. You do not have to understand all that stuff for this, but it's great to, um, if you wanna make your own bass lines, it's great to start going down the road of understanding that stuff. Again, check out the other video, the other two videos in the series. Um, so I'll go to G7, two, three. Oh, interesting. That same voicing on beat three of the G7 measure, it's that half diminished shape again, but now it's functioning as the um, a rootless nine voicing of G7. And that's the third in the bass. Then this is the flat seven. And this is the nine, and this is the five. So um, lots of stuff, if you're overwhelmed by that, um, just take it in as like, okay, that's a direction to go if you're interested in it. That theory series that I did will fill in a lot of it. And then the, the other videos in this series will fill in some of that too. Um, I specifically have a Rootless Chords Voicings uh, video. I'll link to that specifically in the description if you wanna know more about that. But let's just kind of move on. Um, just know that every voicing is a voicing really of each chord just with without the root on the bottom and maybe with an extension or something. So this is another example of that. We have C major seven and we're going one, two, three. This is just the fourth measure of the page. One, two, three. And then that voice in there is, a, is just a typical root position minor seven voicing, but I'm using it as C major seven with a nine. So if you broke down the theory of that, you would see that this is the three of C major seven. This is the, the major seven of C major seven. This is the nine of C major seven. This is 
of the five, right? So it's a handy, just simple way. We're playing the, the chord shape that's just a third up in the key. Uh, if C major is the key for a moment, or even if it's the fourth chord in the key or the first chord in the key, what is the chord that's three notes up is one way to think of it. There are a lot of ways to think of it. So now I'll just kind of go through a little more just for physically what to be playing. So we're going five off of C major seven, then we land on one of F major seven, seven, six. Great example of just, that's the six in the bass, and then the top three notes are just an F major triad. That's why that works. Okay, then we're going down to five of F, and now B half diminished, flat three, voicing off of the flat five of B half diminished, etc. You get the idea. So now it's really just a matter of getting the feel and the technique down and practicing it this way. So again, if you wanted to play this arrangement exactly, awesome, go for it. But I'm, I, it's gonna be great to have to study it from this sheet instead of just tabs where your hands learn it. Cause then you're really thinking, what, what number am I on? Why is it that shape? You know, that kind of thing. So two, three, I'm on G7, five, C, I love this part. repeating um, this is my favorite part here this D minor 7 I just love this ah awesome I never finish ending it off here. So I wrote in a C69 voicing as kind of an ending chord. I like to play that voicing off these three different places. C69 there, C69 there. If you take away the bottom note, it's also a voicing of C69 and then that same shape, an octave up. I got that from a Chet Atkins arrangement um, a long time ago. He ends the song like that. Okay, just to demonstrate now, I'm just going to go ahead and play the exact arrangement as I kind of walked through and explained, and I'm going to sing the melody over it so we can hear it in the context of the real tune. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. song and let me sing forevermore you are all i long for all i worship and adore in other words please be true in other words i love you If you want to go deeper with Fly Me to the Moon and also learn how to play the melody on the guitar with chords at the same time with a chord melody arrangement, I have a free arrangement of that that you can grab by using the link in the description and get a PDF of it. Question for you, what in this lesson helped fill in a little gap that you might be looking to work towards in your playing? Was it maybe needing to understand the theory information of the bass lines with the numbers uh, following those scale degrees and chord tones, or maybe it was how to add a chord in on the third beat without the root on the bottom, or any aspect of it, let me know in the comments. And if you genuinely liked this lesson, please hit that like button. It really helps out the channel and helps other people find the material that they're looking for so they can keep progressing on the guitar. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week, I'm gonna continue this Walking Bass Lines series, and we're just gonna have some fun. I'm gonna take the song No Scrubs by TLC, kind of a hit R&B song from the 90s, and we're gonna add Walking Bass Lines to it and make a little arrangement of it because now that we have this technique this idea of walking bass lines and chords at the same time i don't want us to think that we have to kind of be in the box of jazz or jazz repertoire or jazz standards or jazz tunes like 
we just have fun with it. You can really do it on any song. So we're going to take that song and show how we can kind of make it our own, do something super unique that maybe has never been done before with that song and uh, play around with it that way. It's going to be fun. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much. Take care. Happy practicing.